Good morning, folks. We've got some outstanding articles today. We'll quickly look back in on quakes and the last few days of space weather. We are starting with our star, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on the sun were very quiet. Little flares, no CMEs to go with them, coronal hole, entering center disk today near the equator. And the active regions are not in much danger of flaring. Big group departing on the south, the other umbral arches you see facing Earth are just surface magnetic connections, and top left, we see the next active region and potential sunspots cresting into view here today. Let's look at the solar wind because the older A spacecraft appears to show more of some of those CME impacts we were waiting for, while the new Discover is full of missing data. The impacts that do show on ACE are small and had only minor nudges to the geomagnetic conditions of Earth. Next coronal hole stream should be arriving this weekend. You remember yesterday we put the East Pacific on alert, including the four shocks in the USA which don't hit blood echo depth so they don't make this map. And indeed, Nevada's quake yesterday initially rang in at 5.4. That's sort of what we were expecting to get. It's been downgraded, but the coronal hole earthquake watch does continue until Friday. Up first in the articles is dark galaxies, but not dark in the sense that scientists think it's made of dark matter. Dark in the sense that it's too far away, not bright enough, and it's been hiding in plain sight until now. This speaks to that volume of unseen normal matter which has snuck under the radar while imaginary dark matter sits in front of the jury. And in that same vein, looks like they're missing a ton of the dwarf stars in the galaxy. This plays into that same paradigm but at the galactic level, and it furthers the implications that the massive compact halo objects do indeed play a role in the missing mass of the universe, while once again, it is shock and awe as the astronomers look up into the heavens. And while we're at stellar mysteries, how about the coolest white dwarf they've seen? White dwarfs, if you recall, are supposed to be blazing hot, but this one clocks in under 40,000 degrees. Average white dwarf temperature is more than four times hotter. Now last but not least, I wish I could recram about 80 papers from the last two years into our short-term memories for this one. The sun affects earthquakes. Lead author is one of our favorite in this field or any field, and the seismoelectric and tectonomagnetic structures of Earth utilized as pathways for the quake-making solar energy are positioned according to Earth's geomagnetic field. This has countless hits in both geophysics and solar terrestrial physics, but also catastrophism, and this paper basically tells us which ground regions are taking the largest assault in the super flare or solar micronova. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.